Hello and thank you for joining us for another week of Mark's Madness. He's Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. Six weeks of high school football are in the books. Let's break it down as we always yep. do. Begin with Lima Senior Spartans at home and they did what they were supposed to do in this game. Defeated St. Francis 49-7. to But I think the most impressive thing about the victory was they did it with defense. Yeah, I think you're right. We're used to them scoring a lot of points and that offense has been powerful no matter who they play. They've had some trouble giving up a lot of points, but not so much this. They didn't give up any yards yeah, hardly. Barely. You know, 22 total, 28 rushing and minus. Or, you know, it's, it's just amazing the defensive effort that they put out. I guess 28 passing, minus 6 rushing. Some of those were sacks for sure, but what a great effort. Four turnovers. When you do that on defense and turn it over to that high-powered offense, you're in for a good night. And the offense did what it usually yeah. does as well. Jaden Walker scored three times. Ruben Flowers had a pair mm -hmm. of touchdowns. Darius Gordon they continues threw it to They ran good. it, and they yeah. were dangerous, and, and uh, that, that's a good game for them getting ready to go into their Final Four because they, they've got three of the Final Four on the road and against some pretty good teams starting at Finley. Right, next week they play at Finley. It's a game you'll be able to see on WOSN. Finley lost for the first yeah. time this season last week. So what do you think the key to this game coming up between Finley and Lima Seniors? Remember, the Spartans got Finley last year when they yeah. were both 5-0, and oh, and Lima right. Senior got the win. Yeah, it's a great rivalry down through the years. Basketball, football has been really good. Now they're in the, in the track and, and both good again. Um, so, I, you know, I, it comes down to what you usually say, and especially with with the offense that, that Lima Senior has, and, and Finley's been putting up points too, it, it comes down to turnovers a lot. You know, it's hard to overcome turnovers when you're playing a good team. You can do it when you're playing a team that's not as talented as you give them the ball a few times and still outscore them. But I think in this kind of a game, it's going to be the major mistakes. You know, big penalties at the wrong time, turnovers, maybe a missed tackle in the open field. That'll be the difference because these are two pretty good teams. Seems like at all levels of football, turnovers are always the great equalizer. It, it really is. It's hard to overcome, and, and you'll see as, the, at the, as you go up the, the levels in the pros. I mean, you turn it over there, they, they fire you. Right. you know I mean, you, they just know that you can't do it. But it's a four-team league right now, you know, Toledo Central Catholic and St. John's and, and the two that we just talked about. Uh, they've kind of distanced themselves with 3-0s and 2-1s, and, and, and the next couple of weeks we'll decide that track championship. Some big games coming yeah. up for the Spartans will be fun to follow as they make their way through the rest of the regular season schedule. Speaking of fun to follow, we've had a great time <laughs> keeping track and keeping tabs on that Coldwater defense this yeah. season, and they did it again, 42-7 over Parkway. They led 42-0. Like you've said, a past couple of weeks, this probably could have been an even more lopsided yeah. victory. Yeah. And now we're ready. It's here. Week 7 is here, and it's Coldwater versus Marion Local. Yeah, they, they positioned themselves. Everybody kind of thought it would be that way. Uh, Marion Local had a lot to replace. Of course, Coldwater was replacing, you know, one of the all-time great quarterbacks they've had in their history. Uh, but they've both uh, done it, as you would expect Tim Goodwin and Chip Otten to do. And here they are, and it's going to be a mega matchup, the best, the best matchup in the state of Ohio for this weekend, that's for sure. It's number one in D5 versus number one in D6. Who wins, and how are they going to do it? That's my question for you. Well, uh, you know, I think the game's played at cold water. Yes. Uh, so you got to look at the home team and, and give them a certain amount of advantage. Does that mean they're going to win? No. For, you know. But, again, you'll come down to turnovers and big plays. But I'm going to go a, a step further in this game. I'm going to say that first down is the most important part of this game. Who is successful on first down? And the reason I say that is these teams are so good and know how to win and are so well coached, their defenses are solid, that if you allow the other team to have a good first down, they're in control offensively. If you stop them on first down, now you throw that offense out of rhythm a little bit. Not that they both can't pass and, and gain big yards, but I'm just saying you kind of gain the upper hand on second and third down if you have a good first down. So I'm going to say that first down is the key, and we'll have to look in the stats and see if that holds true. Whoever has most success on first down is going to win this game. That's interesting because that could lead to ball control, which yep. I think with, when you have two good offenses and two good defenses, mm -hmm. ball control is going to be a very important, and time of possession is going to be very important yeah. for I think how this right. game plays out. Yeah. I think you're right. It's possessions and how many times you can get close to scoring. I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I, I, they're too solid. They're too good. Two 6-0 and teams, and we'll have it for you on WCLW 11 p.m. on Friday. Of course, we'll run through the rest of our broadcast schedule later in the show. Also in the MAC, Fort Recovery rolls over New Bremen, 40 to nothing. They just continue to win. A couple shutouts. Mm -hmm. Minster over Delphi St. John's and St. Henry. A nice bounce back win over Versailles. What stands out sure. to you most out of those three? Well, Fort Recovery, we talk about Coldwater's defense. Fort Recovery's given up 32 points all year. So they're really, really good, and they're 6-0. and But if you look at their schedule, they have the toughest four games on their schedule yeah. the next four weeks. They got Min Minster, at Marion Local, St. Henry, and at Versailles. 
That is a murderer's row of four games. And if they come out on the other side, even two and two, eight and two, they get a good spot in the playoffs. So they're, they're having a great year. Minster and St. Henry, they're still, you know, they're not in the hunt anymore, you know, in the league, but they are right there for playoffs. You know, so this game and the others remaining are really important for that seeding. Looks like we're going to get at least five, maybe six MAC yeah. teams in the playoffs again, which is normal. Again. Yeah, that's standard. <laughs> no surprise there. Yeah. In the NWC, Spencerville defeated Grove. This was a good test for mm -hmm. the Bearcats. They're 6-0. and They won 32-8. to And the surprising thing about this game was that they threw for three <laughs> touchdown passes. Yeah. Now, they only threw it four times, <laughs> but, but they three, three were for touchdowns. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty efficient. Yeah. You know, that'd be a heck of a QBR rating or yes. whatever they, they do. Yeah, you're right. And they can throw it. Mason Nurse has a nice arm. He's got some nice targets, you know, some big targets. Uh, and you, you throw those running backs in there, and Goki goes over 1,000 yards. This was a good game for him. This was a struggle because Grove is good, and they're solid. But, uh, you know, Spencerville is the number one scoring offense in our area. You know, you think about the Spartans. You think about Marion Local. These guys score almost 47 points a game, and then they do a lot of good work on defense. They're really, really powerful. Uh, and we've got, you know, down the road, we've got a game coming up. It's going to be a heck of a matchup in this league, kind of like Coldwater Marion Local is in the MAC, and that's when Jefferson and Spencerville play. Yeah, it decided the league title last year. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Spencerville's defense, a huge play towards the end of the half in this game. Mason Nurse had a big interception of Reed Sexual. So Grove was going in to take the lead again at the break, and Spencerville got the pick, and Grove never scored again. This was when it was 13 8 Spencerville, and Grove was trying to retake the lead before the break. So it, it's kind of all facets, it's all coming together. Mm -hmm. Coach Zerby said they were stacking 10 guys in the box, daring them to throw it. Well, they did, a yeah. couple of big plays, yep. and the next thing you know, it, it's, it's a runaway victory. And I think that's what you have to do with Spencer. you got to stop their bread and butter, or try to, and that's the run game. If they beat you with a pass game, hey, they had a good night. You just hope for rain and wind. Right. It didn't work this week because they <laughs> had rain and wind. There was, it was rainy there, I <laughs> promise. I was there, but it didn't work this week. Ada over Crestview as they hold them off. The Bulldogs force five turnovers, mm -hmm. and Trent Joloff gets another victory as a starter. Ada, I think they're better than people think. Yeah, they're, they know how to win. That's a good win for them, a close one, sitting there at 4-2 and two and looking at the playoffs. Crestview, give it some credit there, a very young team. They outgained Ada by a bunch, 351 to 197 in total yards. So they had a nice game, just came up a point short on the scoreboard. Jefferson all over Bluffton, 50 to seven as they continue to roll. 35 at half. Yeah, yeah, and we're, as you mentioned, we're looking forward to Jefferson's mm -hmm. Central. It's looking like it's gonna come down to that. Yeah. And Alan East shuts out Paulding, so they're hanging right there though. Yeah. Just that one yeah. league they're loss five and one, they're yeah. right there. Yeah, they're having a great year. And, and they did it around some injuries too, so good for them. Yes. All right, let's talk about the Western Buckeye League because we, we call it the wild, wild Western Buckeye League here mm -hmm. on Friday night, and it certainly lived up to that name mm -hmm. with Bath, a statement <laughs> victory over St. Yeah. Mary's. Now, yeah. let's, let's take a look at a couple of plays from right. this game and show us how the Wildcats were able to defeat St. Mary's, kind of beating them at their own game on the ground. They really did. First of all, you're going to see one of the prettiest sunsets ever, and right after Ben Reif said, hey, look at the sunset, then the rain clouds moved in and it got dark and it was terrible. But this is Caden Sullivan off the right side. Boy, you're going to see that a lot. Watch, watch the, so, the uh, slow motion replay here. You're going to see uh, right there, see the double team between 19 and 75. And number four, that's Trey Terry. He's the lead blocker on almost all of these highlights we have. But watch what that double team does to open up a little bit of room for Caden to cut up inside. That defender is in the end zone and Caden carries the one remaining guy himself. Now, this is a Bo Gross here, number 48 again. Trey Terry on the lead block. Just keep watching him. He, he must have broken three, four, five tackles to get in the end zone. Just would not be denied. Bo ran very hard. Played great on defense from his inside linebacker position. Here you go. Trey Terry leading up. But there's lots of dark blue jerseys. Bo Gross doesn't carry. Carries him right into the end zone. That is one of the strongest goal line runs I've seen all season long. Then we're going to see Caden Sullivan again. Going to drop back to pass. I don't know if he really was going to throw it down the field. It was a long yardage situation. But, boy, he sure finds a hole and takes up. Now, look at these moves. It was a little slippery. But, man, he's breaking kneecaps on these moves. There's another one right there. My goodness, what a run. Caden Sullivan was unstoppable this night. And uh, this is Bo Gross again going to the other side. Trey Terry, another lead block into the end zone for a touchdown. And look at that. We got a pirouette on top of that high-level chest bump. That's pretty cool stuff. That was great. They, I, they did it with great run defense. You and know, was, that, they're good. We knew they were good going in, but man, they were all awesome. They gave 68 yards rushing to St. Mary's, who runs the ball a lot against everybody. A couple weeks ago, we were breaking down there how successful St. Mary's is on the mm -hmm. ground and what they do. Yep. And Bath kind of 
gave them a taste of their own medicine yes, they did. on Friday night, and it was a big win for the Wildcats. Elsewhere in the Western Buckeye League, Wapak over Salina, 35-14. We were looking mm. forward to this one, maybe a challenge for the Redskins. They answered the call, mm. and the game in the league, I think, ended up being Elida Van Wert. Logan okay. Alexander gets hurt, yeah. returns. Elida wins late. What a game. Yeah, that's a four-team race again, too, in the, in the WBL. Of course, Wapak's at 5-0. Five, five oh. There are three 4-1 and one teams, St. Mary's, OG, Salina. A lot of them play each other. So that's all going to sort out. But Cameron Locke, he, he, he's been a really solid back for, for Wapak. He had 182 and two touches. And, yeah, you mentioned Alexander and Harmon. They were both over 140 for Elida. That was a great game. Van Wert just would not go away. And how about Van Wert and Keith Recker? His guys have lost three games, yeah. two of them right at the end after having big leads, and this one uh, just by a few points when they had a chance, you know, late. So um, that's a tough season for them, but they're, they're plugging. They're getting better and better and better. And also a big win for Elida with the news of Jason Carpenter's yes, suspension as well. Yep. So good to see them bounce back and, and get the victory. Yep. Elsewhere in the Western Buckeye League, OG over Defiance. No surprise there. Kenton on top of Shawnee, 21-14. Indians fought tough in that one. Now let's move to the BVC. Macomb over Lipsick, 37-8. And Macomb has had not really any problems except for the week one loss to Marion Local. That's, That's the only game where they, they've looked human. Yeah. yeah. And Macomb's doing it with defense, too. They've given up 38 points on the season. That includes what they gave up to Marion Local. So take that out. And yeah, Liberty Benton, Macomb, you know, they're in that same division. What are they in? The Blanchard, I yes, think. The Blanchard Both division. Both 2-0. And, and uh, on the other side, there's three 2-0 teams. Hopewell Loudon's been playing well all year long in the, in the Valley Conference, but Van Buren started off 0-3. Three. three straight. Now, now they're 3-3, right? three and, three, yep. and they're 2-0 and in their league. Now, the, the different thing about the, that BVC is – your league games only count when you play in your division. division. That'll change so, next year, but okay, for now, I yeah. think that's a good change. Yeah. But that allows Lipsick, who we just said got beat by Macomb, and they're two and four. They're two and zero oh in their their division. Yeah. They are, they're in the hunt for that division. Good for them. But uh, it's going to come down to Macomb and Liberty Benton in that division, and then Hopewell Loudon. Uh, if they can fend off Lipsick and Van Buren, will win the other division. Well, that's five straight now for the Panthers. Liberty Benton defeated Arlington 34-6. to They seem to be healthy, getting things back yes. together. Yep. And Corey Rossens won two in a row. Hey, good, good for them. Good for you them, know, right? Because they've struggled, and they're very, yeah. very young. But uh, they, they've won a couple of games here. That's got to give those guys a lot of confidence. A lot more fun going to practice after a win. Absolutely. All right, before we get to next week's games and what we're looking forward to, we're going to talk about the NWCC. Yeah. USV now stands alone atop the league. They're the only unbeaten team in league play in the Northwest Central Conference. Mm -hmm. They're at 3-0 and a big 45 nothing victory over Perry. Yeah, things do, it kind of went topsy-turvy in that league. Yes. Uh, the, the big game, of course, is Riverside and USV coming up. That'll be a great one. But Lehman and Fort Lorman with those bad starts against very good competition, they're sitting at two and one, just waiting for somebody to stumble and they're right in the hunt. So, uh, you know, we thought they might uh, have down years and be out of the league race. They're right there, they're waiting. All right, so what are you looking forward to this week? Because we oh, already man. talked about a couple big ones and we have a there's great, great rebroadcast schedule, yeah. but even aside yeah. from that, there's yeah. lots of games to be excited about all over. Well, I, I like the matchup in, in the BVC, you know, the, the leaders in each division, Macomb and Hopewell Loudon playing. I think that'll be good. Coldwater Marion Local, as I already said, is the best in the state. Lima Senior and Finley, just a rivalry and, and really to stay in the league race, you got to win that one. And then I like St. Mary's and Salina. You know, it's the battle across the lake and, and both teams are 4-1 and one in the league. I mean, that, there's a lot riding on that. And, and I would imagine practice hasn't been a lot of fun at St. Mary's this week because uh, Coach Fry, you know, he gets, he gets their attention in a hurry when they don't do things right. And I'm sure he'll have them ready to play and Salina's pretty good too. Bath versus Van Wert, also intriguing. Could be another really good game. Two teams that yeah. have played really tough, and I expect that game to be physical. Yep. Grove Jefferson, Bluffton Spencerville Just in the NWC. Of and this time of year. This is great. It a is A lot great. of them riding, a yeah. lot of stuff riding on these games. Absolutely. Yep. All right, let's get you our rebroadcast schedule so you know what you can watch when and where. Friday at 11 p.m. on WTLW, it's number one versus number one. Marion Local versus Coldwater, two defending state champs squaring off. Excited to bring it to you. Friday at 11 p.m. on WOSN, Lima Senior versus Finley from up at Donnell Stadium. That should be a good one as well. So take your pick of those games on Friday at 11 after the sports report. Saturday at 7 p.m. It begins a doubleheader, a Western Buckeye League doubleheader. Elida versus Shawnee first at 7 p.m. and then St. Mary's versus Solana at 9 p.m. And those are the four games you'll be able to see on the family of networks. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Great yep. job as Fun always. Again. Yep, we'll be right back here next week to help break down week seven. Have a good one.